working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shoot it to the right, shoot it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. Yeah, I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm gonna be in that winter circle someday. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this edition of What a Horse. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? <laughs> sir, is there a sir in the building? Uh, before we get started, I do want to uh, send prayers to Fletcher Griffin and his family. We lost Sharon. She is a longtime walking horse enthusiast, been sick for quite a while. And uh, I was just learned this morning that she had passed. So I want everybody to remember Fletcher in your prayers. Yep. What do you think? Yeah, mm -hmm. we do. But we'll, be, we'll talk more about it right after these commercials. Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And KD Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Seabury and see what being number one is all about. Two-time world champion and world grand champion Joe Hall is now standing at stud during the 2023 breeding season at Precious Memory Farm for $750. Contact Daniel Miller, 931-703-5830 or Shane Porterfield, 615-809-4257. Joe Hall is now standing at stud at Precious Memory Farm. Hi, I'm Smokey Bear, and I made an assistant to help you out, because only you can prevent wildfires. Hey, Assistant Smokey Bear, call me Papa Bear, because I'm grilling up dinner. <laughs> do you get it? Yes, good job. So, what should I do with all these coals? Don't just toss them out. Put them in a metal container, because those embers can start a wildfire. I understand. The stakes are high. Ha, 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 ha. See, Smokey thinks I'm funny. Perfection Leather, a division of the Winter Circle. Our high quality products are handcrafted at our manufacturing facility in Shelbyville, Tennessee, using the very finest Wicked and Craig bridle and harness leather. All hides are thoroughly inspected to ensure consistent thickness and a smooth finish. They are also examined for any imperfections that would reduce the quality of our products. After inspection of the hides, each piece is hand cut or die cut to the product's precise specifications. Each component is then assembled by an experienced craftsman. The assembled product is then stitched by an experienced operator using state-of-the-art lock stitch machinery. The stitched product is then finished and hand polished to their completion. After completion, each product is carefully inspected for quality assurance. All of Perfection Leather products are available at the Winter Circle Horse Supply. The Tennessee Walking Horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee Walking Horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. 
If it's competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect family horse by young and old. Whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee Walking Horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you're on one tomorrow. That's a fact. <laughs> All right, I've got a few uh, announcements to make, and then I'm probably going to make some people mad, Jerry, and I might even make you mad. I don't know. <laughs> no. But I'm going to try not to. I'm going to try to be nice. Strawberry Festival is this Friday night in Humboldt. Robbie Spears, my good buddy, is uh, she's going to be the judge there. You can contact Benjer uh, Vicki Benjamin, 731-694-5188. Start time is 6.30. Professional Trainers Racking Show is in Huntsville, Alabama. Contact Gary Wayne Smith, 256-709-5661. Friday night start time is 6 p.m. Saturday is 5 p.m. Smokies. In the Classic, the Smoky Mountain Classic is May 13th, that's Saturday, in Sevierville, Tennessee. You can call Monica Tempton, 865-661-2591. Start time is 6 p.m. And you, the judge is Terry Matthews. A good judge. And then in Lynchburg, Tennessee, we've got the equine support. And we've got 10 judges. We got them scattered all over the place. You can contact Marcy Allison, 931-639-2518, or Frances Bates, which is the show manager, but she ain't going to be able to be there because they got the Strawberry Festival. 931-703-9797, but she's still helping. Or you can contact me, 931-581-4411. Now we're going to start talking about this weekend shows, which... There's a lot went on, <clears throat> and here's where I'm going to make some people mad, I guess. Uh, the Derby Classic had 185 entries. The government was there. The one thing that stands out, and I want to commend all the trainers that went up there because of the quality of horses that they brought, there were, out of 185 entries, zero scratches. That's a good deal. Now, this is what that means. That means that with the government there, VMO checking, they didn't have, if it hadn't have been for some silly mistakes like high band, foreign substance, things like that, they would have had a 99% compliance rate yes. with the VMO they're checking. Now, that VMO was evidently was doing a great job of inspecting horses and not trying to create a problem, but to see if there was. And according to what I heard from everybody involved, there was no problem. Yeah. Now, let's do a flip on that. Let's go to Parker's Crossroads. Parker's Crossroads had 122 entries, and they they had close to 20 scratches. <laughs> they had uh, 15 of those entries was in a backyard country show, a uh, country boy show, but uh, it was just opposite. Uh, they only had 84 ribbons handed out, which meant that just to be frank, the VMO there found more violations than they did at Parker's Crossroads. Yeah. There's a reason for that. And when people see the VMO show up that was at Parker's Crossroads, they know that, and I, and I hate to say it because I believe in the Horse Protection Act. Yes. Here. But when you've got a VMO that's inspecting the way that this one inspects, the DQP start second guessing their self and sometimes doing things that they don't want to do, but they don't want the VMO to 
say, well, they didn't do their job. Yes. When it actually is not the DQP not doing their job. And, and if I make people mad, I just made them mad. I don't care. Because I look, I look at the total picture. I don't look at part of it. I've watched this lady inspect before. She has problems picking up a foot. She, and then evidently she, she tries to create a problem. And with that, I do have a problem. Well, the thing of it is, is like this. If you, if you know at some shows the VMOs there and everything runs smoothly, and then you got some shows the same VMOs there, and it started having a problem, and, and they only have problems at the shows that they are there, you might need to check the VMOs, the one that's checking that show. That's right. Well, this lady right here is not the one we're talking about. I want everybody to know that. Uh, she, she, we had a problem with her, but we, we no longer have that problem. Dr. Mullen showed what was going on, how they were getting horses to move. But my problem is this, Jerry. If there's a problem, get them. And evidently, in the Derby, if there was a problem, the VMO there was finding it. Or the DQP was finding yes. it. That's post-show and pre-show. But when you've got one that comes with an agenda that seems to be, it, it's kind of like this. And here's where I'm going to make some people mad. And I may make the VMOs mad. I don't mean to. Because I've I, I, I watched some of them inspect and they do an outstanding job. If you've got a classroom full of kids, and you only have a problem when one or two of those kids are present, then it's pretty obvious what the problem, problem is. You're exactly right. So what I'm saying is this. I think the HPA is a necessity. We cannot, we cannot do without. We've got to have it. But we've got to have it with inspectors, both DQP inspectors and BMO inspectors that come there to do an ethical and honest job of finding a violation, not creating a violation. And if they don't know the difference, they don't need to be inspecting horses. Yes. Our, our, our owners and our trainers deserve better. That's why my hat goes off to the trainers that brought horses up to be inspected in Parker's Crossroads because they knew what they were facing when they went up there. You know, when you take them horses, being from a, on a trainer's point of view of it, that's that trainer's livelihood. It is. That's involved in that. One person, one person that got a vendor to do something bad can ruin that person's life. That's fact. And can, well, he can't feed his family or do whatever because that's all he ever done was fool with these horses. That's it. And that's what I try to tell people, Jerry. The, pe the trainers in Kentucky at the Derby, I cannot say enough about them. The, they, they did a fantastic job. They brought their horses up. The VMO up there, from what I heard, was outstanding. She did her job. She inspected horses. If she found something wrong, and, and here's, here's the big issue. I mean, this is the big one. I have heard not one complaint from Kentucky. Yeah. Not one. They wasn't none upset anything. If there was something wrong, they went with it. And, and some, some of their violations was just simple mistake. Yes. Something that they didn't catch. But there was not one complaint against the VMO. Well, that's like everybody. The trainers done their job, the DQP done their job, and the VMO done their job. That's right. And so everybody's done what they're supposed to do. But now when you got one person that when you go and you show her and the, and the trainers feel like he's doing his job and the DQP and then you got the VMO that, that's out in left field somewhere, then, I mean, it, it hurts everyone. Well, that's all I've heard is complaints. Well, right before we did the show, I was on the phone with a guy complaining about what happened in Parker's Crossroads. Well, it, and that's the whole thing. There was 185 entries in Kentucky. There was only 122 entries 
in Parker's Crossroads. Major difference in violations. Yes. Major. And that's what really, really upsets me. There was no scratches in the Derby, but there was scratches at Parker's Crossroads. Now, we're talking about trainers that some of those trainers, I know this was in Kentucky, that said, well, everything's going great. I'm going to run down. Well, you feel comfortable when you, when you go when you go to and you take a horse and you've got the BMOs there and all the horses show that goes in. You feel comfortable with the person that's checking the horses and everything else. Well, it is. But when you when you can say it, that's why I tell everybody in Tennessee, we have a law. You can video. You can video the inspection. Show management can't stop you. The VMO cannot stop you. The DQP cannot stop you. No one can stop you from videoing the inspection. Video it. Document everything. If you get a scar rule, document it. Get the information on it. Make them show you the, the scar rule. Call the show vet or another vet. Get him to document what he sees. Do all of this. Don't just say, well, that's the way it is. If they get you for that, document it. Yes. Video. Because I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm, we, we had equine education. And the VMOs come in, and I'm here to tell you, when, when you've got a good VMO, then they are an asset to this industry. That's right. You're a exactly, major asset. You're exactly right. And when you don't have one, then they are, they are, they're not an asset to their own industry, much less the walking horse industry. And BMOs are supposed to be helping us. Yes. So I watched all these women that came in for the equine education. They had as much fun as I did. I can yes. tell you uh -huh. that. The, and, and some of them, they was having bean bag contests. They was having all of this. They were showing the structure of a horse, the bones and everything. Everybody had a good time and everybody worked together. And then you go and you see what happened in Kentucky and you put it and weigh it against what happened in Parker's Crossroads. And then you look at another show that was going on, which I called and, and found out that how many entries they had and how many violations with the government wasn't there. But they, they still tagged them for violations. Wasn't that many, but uh, a couple, I think. But my point is this. If you got 185 horses with no scratches, you got 122 horses with as many scratches as evidently they had, yeah. at least 20, then there is a problem. Oh yeah, it is a problem. And and it's not with the the it's it's not with the DQP because the DQPs are normally doing their job the same every time yes. I watch them. But I do know this: when you got a VMO that's reaching, and you don't want she has a bearing on the DQP adjusting what he's doing because he, he does not want a bad rap. Yeah. And we've all seen it. They, you can't stand over somebody and put pressure on them. What was it you told me that Dr. Dassault was at a show? He stood there and watched them inspecting, never never bothered them. Never said, never said seen, a word. He's seen them do their job yeah. and leave them alone. Mm -hmm. But when you got a VMO that continuously tags horses and sends them back, and I've only seen two this year that's like that. Yes. Only two. And uh, the rest of them, they seem to be doing. The rest of them doing their job. You know, it just, I don't know. I think they need to evaluate. The, whoever over the, the USDA need to evaluate the people that they send out checking. Because you can send out one, a couple groups and everything runs fine. But you send out two or three people and then everything is there, up in there, the. There, there's got to be an answer to it. Yeah. But, you want to, I don't care if the USDA is there, as long as they're there to do their job. 
and I know they want to attend 50 more shows this year. I also know, and I truly believe this, people, we need to look at the SCAR rule uh, law and do something about it because if we could do away with the SCAR rule, then the Humane Society out here preaching about the action device, if, the, if there's no SCAR rule, there's no problem with the action device. If you have to go back to square one on that action device to come up with how, what weight of an action device harms a horse, I can remember back we did a, a test on them and after being ridden for two weeks with no grease, with a 10 ounce action device, it showed there was no harm done to the horse. So all the trainers, all the owners, and everybody needs to think about that because that action device we know does not harm, harm the horse. But if we do away with it and the test have to be run again, it'd be just like the, the science that uh, the USDA helped pay for and the industry helped pay for, we'd get, we don't know where we would end up. But then we could go look at the palpation because the way the palpation do, is done, if that horse walks the cones freely, there's no reason to palpate him, especially if there's no scar root. Yes. So everybody needs to think about that. Not just me. I'm a dumb old country boy, and I've been thinking about it. But everybody needs to think thinking about it and talk to their trainers about it. What would it be if we didn't have a scar root? All right, we got some video, but I think before we do that, we're going to go to commercial. Yo, yo. Oh, no. This is the way it is. These are the victory passes from last week. I forgot about them. Thanks for correcting me. The way I am in Tina Moss for Shane Porterfield. Shane's got some good horses. Shane got buddy. some real good horses. I mean good ones. He has got some fine horses. Here's Dorel. I said. I, I want to announce this. I got to say it, boy. Jerry's proud. Jeremy has officially named, changed his name to Williams. Yes. He, he took his mother, or his mother gave him his name. name uh huh. But Virginia be tickled too. That horse there is a real nice horse, and Jeremy oh, yeah. does a super job. And I want my hats off to Virginia. She, she does a good job yes. of supporting her horses. Yes, yeah, she does. Right here Cole Hahn, Allie Joe. Tell you what, now, she, everybody that talks to me, they say, I see you got two, two, caps out there. Yep, I got Allie Joe's cap, and I got my man, the medalist over here, too. I like I this horse. Right. I like oh, this yeah. horse right here. I do, too. I, do. I think that horse is a perfect juvenile horse. I mean, everything's he smooth. Is. Everything's put together. He is. I, mean, I mean, he's put together just right. Yeah. And she ain't and struggling. Big. Yeah. And she ain't struggling to ride him. Nope. Or whatever. Everything is so smooth on him. Sitting up there just getting it done. Yes. But she, she had a good teacher. Right here, I'm big enough in Maxine Beasley. This one said he didn't change his name to sew, Sewing Machine because he gets, <laughs> every time <laughs> you look at him, he's the same way, buddy. Hey, he's a nice horse. He, I'll tell you, Samson. That's who he reminds yeah. me of. He really is. Because he's, he's kind of like Mr. Automatic. You go out there and, and he is stroking. His name fit him. He yeah. is big enough. Maxine does a good job yeah. showing him. She does a good job. Right here is Errol Smith and Courtney Luttrell for Luttrell and Connor. Amateur two-year-old stallion. That's a real nice coat by Perfect Hawk. I believe you had something to do with that one, yeah, didn't we, you? Yeah, I, I um, started him and, and everything else, but that's, that coat started off real good. Yeah. I put a sand on there. Y'all can look through Muddy Ward and see dry land when he was just a baby. <laughs> and he hey. turned out to be pretty good there. Courtney does a real good job on that horse riding him and Brandon well, Nashaw. She's a good rider. Yeah, I mean, Brandon Nashaw train him at Snapwood there. Here's Ali Joe Equitation. I tell you what, I want to say something too. We, we got our show this weekend in Lynchburg and I've got Jake Jacobs crew. They are going to get the track ready. They got this track ready after all that rain. Yes. They can get a track ready, buddy. Done a, a terrific job on that track right there. If I have, I just hope and pray I have the same luck they did. 
I tell you, Allie Jo showing one division, then going another division, yeah. all the different divisions <laughs> she goes in, I tell you, she does a... If it's a horse she just wants to ride, here's slim and hot, Robert Dortch. And he is the owner. He, he has purchased that horse. Okay. They have not, I just don't think they swapped it over in the reports yet. Robert rides a bunch of good horses too. Oh, hey. hey. He can ride one. Hey, he does not miss a lick no. now. Uh -uh. If there's one out there, he's going to go find it. And a very pleasant guy to talk to. Oh, Lord. He, he's a good guy. Super good guy. And right here is Knox Blackburn on the Georgia Florida line for Robert Dorch. Robert does a good job of showing this horse. Too. Oh, yeah. Show pleasure, Ryder Cup winner. That horse there, and he can be Mr. Show Pleasure himself. That oh, yeah. Right there, he's a nice one. He gets it done. Yeah. You know, that's a tough, tough. Oh, that's a tough class. That Show hey. Pleasure class is a bunch he's of good horses in that class. Easy about it. And here's walking Mr. Charlie and Jimmy McConnell for Terry and Lisa Smith. You ever talk to them? Yeah, that's they, a nice they are some, they, yeah, they a nice are, man. That's a nice couple. They're, they're from really Franklin nice. County. Yeah. That's God's mm -hmm. country. Yeah. You know that, don't you? That's where I live. <laughs> that Franklin County is all. Jimmy, Jimmy just as uh, Jimmy, buddy. Yeah, Jimmy does. When he comes, he comes for the gold, doesn't he? he yeah, he you know the thing up. of it is watching him when I was a kid. Yeah. Now I'm watching him as I'm a grown up, you know, it just. I, and you know, he, he got, had a little problem here, but he's back in the saddle. Yeah. He ain't missing mm -hmm. a lick. I guess you can do your thing. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Same bloodline, same mother, same father, and here he is. Now this is offspring. Now Hero is standing at stud at Jerry Williams stable. Yes, now I'm gonna tell you, that's a, that's a real nice horse. That horse had an injury happen to him in the stall when he was young, um, but now I tell you, got, all, got a lot of talent, that Hero horse does. He's a real nice horse. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, I have a big passion for the Tennessee walking horse. But I also have another passion, and that's for communication systems and saving my customers money. And we've done automobile dealerships, shoe stores, law offices, dentist offices, even the Breeders Association. I have installed systems from California to New York to Florida. And now, for a limited time, I am giving three months free service to everybody that signs up for host my calls. And there will be no installation charge. Call me today, 931-581-4411, and see if I can save you money on your communications. What does Habitat for Humanity build? Hope. Opportunity. Joy and togetherness. Growth and transformation. Strength and stability. Community. Home. Hey everybody, I'm Garth Brooks. And I'm Trisha Yearwood. And nothing illustrates the beauty of what we can build together, like Habitat for Humanity. A safe, decent, affordable place to call home is a campus full of possibility. In our work with Habitat, we've seen what's possible. Financial stability, peace of mind, room to grow and play, better health, brighter futures. In your community and around the world right now, neighbors are helping neighbors build masterpieces of their own. Visit Habitat.org to learn more and get involved today. You know, my friends think I know everything there is to know about the walking horse industry. And I do know a lot, but not everything. I do know one thing, though. My father told me I could find out anything I needed to know about this industry by going to walkinghorsereport.com. And you know what? He was right. Everything from single night shows to multi night shows, sibling and progeny searches, Ryder Cup standing, stallion reports. They even have a calendar of shows for the entire year and all the current news. It's all right there at the tip of my fingers when I go to walking horsereport.com. You know, they could do it themselves, but I don't think I'm going to tell them. Let's just keep them wondering how I know so much. All right, now we're going to have some fun. 
Because we got a bunch of different horses on here. We, yeah. We're promoting Hero. We're promoting Coat. Promoting these kids. Yes. I, I can't wait to see Coat in the ring. I'm, I'm looking I forward can't wait. to that. He like it now. He he really he's getting, getting excited. He's getting hung up. Yes, he is. He's getting excited. I, I figured we'd we'd get to hook in him. <laughs> <laughs> he'd, he'd get he'd get to where he'll clean stall, do yeah. anything, just ride a <laughs> get horse. Get the ride a that's, horse. That's what we're after. Yeah, All right, right, let's show some video. This is Colt now. <laughs> he is uh, he is getting ready. He he did yeah. real good until he seen up, looked over and them girls was watching. Oh him. yeah. He, uh, yeah, he really liked to ride them horses. He does a good job. He tickles me, buddy. I mean, he, he's a character now. He uh, gets it done. There he is yeah. out there in the ring. So. Oh, yeah, you got that hair blowing in yeah. the wind. You got him a little hat and everything. Mm hmm. You got well, him a hat and he's got him a trainer's hat. He's ready. He'll tell everybody he's working out there now. Him and his Uncle Jeremy. Uncle. He's yeah. an assistant trainer. Yep. They tell me to sit back in the, in the background and let them train. They got to let, let them Let them do, his, let, do the thing they, with him. Yeah. I can understand that. <laughs> I can do that. But you know, I've been looking around too. These uh, IMs, they, they y'all got an I am, Jose, yeah, three year old, mm -hmm. and and we're gonna show that, cause after that I'm we we showed a hero, two year yeah. old, yeah that was a two year old, yeah. but Joe Fleming's got a got a filly, yes, by mm -hmm. hero, that's good. Let's see the I am three year old. <clears throat> Tell you what now he he's a piece of work. This coat coming on pretty good. This coat real little as <laughs> a two year old. And we just. Really kind of started him, you know, pretty much pushing him after he turned three. He was real small. Well, he's more the size of his father. Yeah, uh-huh. That's what gets me. Now, he, he, he is uh, he's smaller, but now these heroes, which is a full brother to I am Jose. Yeah, they're bigger. Now, yeah, now, and, and he's, he's bigger. Big. He's, he's bigger. bigger. Than I am. Yeah. <coughs> <clears throat> yeah, he's, I, I, he's got a heck of a lick on yeah. him, but we, we're going to have to get a picture of this hero horse because I'm going to tell you, he's putting some good ones, real good ones on the ground. And I think I went down to um, Joe Fleming. Yes. And because he had told me that, that he had a filly, but I went down there and watched that filly. I put a video out there on Facebook. Everybody likes it. Yeah. Now, Robbie's talking about what a good back end that filly has. But now, she's going to be good. Yeah, she is going she's to be going good. She's going to be a whole lot better than she is in this video. If that video is ready, let's see it. And I can tell you, the more he works this filly, because I had wondered where she was out there in the gravel. Yeah, and this filly was on a flat shoe. Yeah. She's yeah. flat shot. She flat shot. But now she's a. Uh, I mean, that feel like got a good back end. I mean, holds the head real good. And right there is our little filly. Yeah. This filly here coming on real good. Oh yeah. Now this filly is by Deal. Yeah. The other filly is by Hero. And I'm, I'm really too. liking this one right yeah. here. Now, I really am. She uh, she's getting better as time goes on. Oh, yeah. She uses her back end. Of course, now we're talking about a country pleasure. Yeah. And a light shot. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's two different two different things here. But now she's gonna make a good country yeah. pleasure. Took her to uh, uh, from a one to a two. Yeah. Right before this was this one was made. But she's gonna she's gonna keep getting better and better. We're not gonna show her until this fall or late in the, later yeah. in the summer. When do they have the maiden? It's uh, 
right right before celebration. celebration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. In July, first of August. She'll be a whole lot better by then. Yeah. Jeremy's already talking about it. I said, I'm gonna show her, I'm gonna show her. <laughs> I'm gonna show her in that flesh hog <laughs> I said, I said, you got a cowboy suit. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to dress him up like oh, yeah. Roy Rogers. Roy Rogers, that's right. Let but this Philly is a real nice Philly. I mean, oh, she is. Now she's nice. Yeah. She's gonna keep getting better and better. All right, from that we're gonna go to uh this is your buddy. Yeah. Keith. Mm -hmm. Keith, Keith outside yeah. little boy. Yeah. And and Keith Keith told me, and, and I want everybody to know this. Keith told me, he said, look, he said, I want to make sure that the right people get credit for training this horse. He said, you can say Alshire stables or whatever, but I want the ones that do the training to really get the recognition on it. Not many people do that. No, uh, I mean, Keith a is a good guy, I tell you. Hey, he, I've been knowing was, Keith, and his dad was a real good racking horse trainer. Yeah. You know. Well, talking to him on the phone, he's, he's, I've never talked to him in person that I know of other than just say hi or whatever. Yeah, but now, but now he's talking a real to good him guy. on the phone, he's a super good guy. He, he is, he is. Well, let's watch his video. Now, they, they, somebody did this video for him. Yeah. And sent it to him. But now the, the guys that was, uh, he says that do the, the training. Yeah. Now they're, they're the ones that, uh, Keith Bicknell and Robert Dupree yep. are his trainers and the horse is owned by Jamie Ishire and Haley Rutledge. But we took the video. Now this, anybody's going to send us a video, turn your phone sideways and we won't have these black bars. I tell you but, what, that, that little boy. But now that's a good video. That's a good horse. That's a good horse and his son riding. And I tell you, it reminds me, he reminds me so much of Keith when he was that age. I remember mm. Keith used to show. He's a big boy. Where, I hope he plays football. Yeah. If he don't, Keith bring him down here to Tullahoma. We will put him on a football tape. <laughs> he looked just like his dad at that age right there. Well, I know he was He was I very adamant you. that that uh, the guys, the, the one that did the training was uh, Jamie, uh, no, was Robert Dupree yeah. and Keith he, Bicknell. Keith, so, both of them is the top trainers. Well, they did a good job with this one because that, that's some good video. It, I'd rather have it stretched out, yeah. but now that's a good horse. You know, Keith Bicknell, I believe, if I ain't mistaken, I think he started Sunday Star. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Had him as a two-year-old. Hmm. Yeah. That's, well, where are we at now? Well, i got to check and see where we're at. I think we're going to go to commercial and then we're going to the Derby. Not yep. the Kentucky Derby. We're going to the Derby, Derby. and the Hill. All right. <laughs> we'll go to commercial. <laughs> Can't believe you're doing this alone. I've done it before. I remember you threw your back out. <laughs> How you holding up? Hand me that board. Nothing wrong with getting help. I'm good. I did it when Felicia left. I'll figure it out. I know you will, but you don't have to do it alone. That's all I'm saying. If I promise to look into it, will you drop it and help me build this fence? <laughs> now you need my help. You can be a real pain sometimes, you know that? Mm -hmm. If you or a veteran you know needs support, don't wait. Reach out. Find resources at va.gov reach. The Mona Dean family is proud to announce that the multi-time world champion and world grand champion minor ordeal is now available for breeding at Sugar Creek Breeding Facility for the 2023 spring breeding season. Minor ordeal. Minor ordeal has proven year after year that he is one of the elite champions of all time winning five world grand championships, one world grand championship, and the reserve world grand championship as well. Minor ordeal, a major win here in the two-year-old division, our world grand champion. Make the call to breed to a true champion, minor ordeal, 931-680-0897.
six-time world champion in amateur and open competition, four times amateur world grand champion, and 2019 world grand champion. Standing at stud for Joanne Dowell at Fantasy Farms in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. Call 931-389-6983 for breeding information. An estimated 11 million Americans have heart valve disease, but most of us know little to nothing about it. People can be born with valve problems, or they can develop from cardiovascular disease, infections, certain cancer treatments, and age, with older adults at the highest risk. If diagnosed early, it can usually be successfully treated, no matter what your age. Valve disease can cause a number of symptoms, including lightheadedness, irregular heartbeat, shortness of breath, tiredness, swelling of the ankles and feet, and not feeling like yourself in general. But is often only detected when your heart is listened to by a healthcare professional. So listen to your heart. See your healthcare professional. Discuss your risk factors and any potential symptoms. And go to valvedeaseday.org to learn more. More of What a Horse coming up. All right. I want to, we're, we're going to show some Derby Classic because those trainers, they did, I'm just, they did one hell of a job. Now they did, yeah. they, they came, they brought their horses, they showed their horses, they brought their horses up, the VMO that was there, uh, did a fantastic job. Uh, I've heard all kinds of compliments on her. Uh, everybody was, nobody had anything bad to say about the inspections, the Derby Classic, and they, they had some violations, yeah. but everybody could live with what was found. So some of the violations were kind of dumb. Well, I mean, the, in my the, book, the way it is dumb, you know, um, foreign substance. That's nothing that you can write. If you pick your hand up something on your hand, hey, that's foreign substance. So I mean, ain't nothing you can, you know, mm -hmm. ain't nothing you can do you can, about it. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Uh, ain't nothing you can, you know, can say bad about the BMO. They're doing their job. A high band. A high band. That's just not watching what you're doing. Yeah. Here's your youth eleven under. Now I'm gonna tell you. These youths, they don't take a back seat to nobody. No, they don't. He's a lucky strike. And Avery Derrickson took the blue for Ralph Derrickson. He's ballistic. The Vanny Bullock for Dr. Bullock. Bakersfield, Brooklyn Jones. She's walking the streets. Shane Smith for Doug Powers. And Hawkeye's Mouse. Boy, that ain't a name. Oh, yeah. Hawkeye's Mouse. Grace Hammett for Gary Fetterman. Nice horses in there. Hey, they had they had a great show, Jerry. Yeah. I mean, you you can uh, look at the quality in there. You know, I realize that that's a nice place to have oh, a horse show. A nice place to have a horse show. I'm not for sure, but I think that's where they have the celebration, the Kentucky celebration at. Well, it's it's a good place to have it. Yeah. That's what I really want to start doing is going to them shows far off like that ones they ain't never been to kind of yep. help support them shows. Well, I tell you what, this one right here, that they, 185 entries, yeah, no scratches. The trainers bringing their horses. I think they had six pre-show violations, which was not that bad. Here's your amateur park performance. This is always a good class. Yes. A perfectionist in Vicki Watkins took the blue for Tommy Jowers' family. He's the banker. Lincoln Cobb, or O'Banion Cobb. Louie, Shane Smith for the Collins family, Dixie Gale, Carrie Stampler, Carrington Stampler for Carrington and Stampler. 
They, they've got this mixed up here. Man, they're mixing me up. But either way, they had some pretty nice horses in that class right there. Even this, this is yeah, messed, messed up. up. I'm going to tell you, they do. They got some real nice ones. I like that horse right there. Yeah. You know, you watch these horses, and every one of them has a different way of going. Yeah. Just some of them you like a little bit better. Here's your youth country pleasure. This was a really nice class. I'm a little funky. The Vanny Bullet took the blue. Divine, Isabel Easley. Broadway, Broadwell. Briley Good, Attaboy Leroy. Two Hardy Thompson, Attaboy Leroy. Mm -hmm. He's so, it says he's so red. I don't think that'd be he's so bad. For Addie Nelson and Burning Silver, Kendall McClure finished the ribbons. This is a nice little class here too. They had a heck of a show there. Uh, they did, they had a nice show. Yep. There wasn't nothing wrong with that show. One it lady wasn't. said it was the best show they'd had in years. See, I'm watching these comparing that to mine. Yeah. <laughs> Got to compare it to some. Oh, yeah. You were right. Yeah, what they had a nice crowd too. They did. It'd be a great place to do a live stream from. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it really would. And here's youth all day pleasure. Cassie's June lady. Maddie Grace McMora. I like this one. He's Black Pepper. Ellie yeah. Grace Lunksford. <clears throat> Exter, Macy James. She walks like an angel. Isabel Easley. There's Attaboy Leroy again. Drew Hadley Thomas. And Burning Silver, Clinda McClure. Who judged this show, you know? You'll never get Chris Helton. Chris Helton, okay. He did a good job. Yeah. I had a, heard a lot of compliments, compliments on him. Chris is a good guy, I tell he you. He is, he's a super good he's guy. Good. He's the same way every time we <coughs> see him, he's the same way. Nice horses in there. Yeah, it is. I like that gray. Right here's your show pleasure rider cup. This was a tough class, bub. I'm Tom Thumb. Jimmy Bumgardner took the blue. He's a jailbird. Scott Beatty. Charlie Danger. Ryan Blackburn. That is a real good horse. Oh, yeah. Take a gamble, Robin Cobb. Chris Angel, R.M. Kelly, and Eubanks, Robbie Bradley, finished out the ribbons. That's some nice horses in that car. Yes, right there. some real nice horses in it. 
Jimmy was on a good one now. Oh, yeah. He really was. Jimmy does a good job. He's... He beat some real good horses in there. Hey, he, he showed some real good ones up yeah. there. He won a couple of... He won some other classes. He's real proud of this one, though. Yeah. That show pleasure class this year, it's going to be tough now. Oh, yeah. You better have something or you ain't going to get far in it, that's for sure. Prime Blackman on the real good one. Yeah. Right I'm proud for Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that Charlie Danger. That's Ginger Williams' horse. Yeah. There's several good ones in there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Right there he is. I'm Tom Thumb. Jimmy Bumgardner for Laurie Gwynn. Show pleasure Ryder Cup winner. I'll tell you what, there ain't nothing wrong no, with that. Not. Good. He was good in that class too. Yeah. Real good. Now I can understand why Jimmy was so tickled. Didn't take long to get tickled on that one. Here's your amateur four-year-old mares and gilding. Ginger Williams won this on Asking for a Friend. Okay. Ain't that a name? Oh, yeah. <laughs> By Jose, Asking for a Friend. Malagross Command and Karen Gaither to the reserve. Redford Lane Sigmund and the goat. The goat. Jordan Cardell, the goat. That's a heck of a name, the goat. Yeah. And here's your state class. I tell you what. Warbird took the blue in this one with Ryan Blackburn in the saddle for Ginger Williams. Empty Pockets, R.M. Kellett for Tammy Austin. I am honors, Jimmy Bumgardner. And high honor, Travis Wiley. But Warbird, now they did not do a canter in this class. Yeah. But that, that's a bunch of good horse out there, and I don't care what you say. I like that Warbird. I like him a lot. <laughs> Excuse me. Another good class. I'm telling you, they that had a they had a heck of a show up there. A good horse. People getting into it. Yeah. Real nice horses yeah. in that class. I do mean nice. Or am on a good one. Yeah. I'll tell you what, it gets. I enjoy it when you can go to a horse show and watch a good horse, horse show. show. Me too. And I they like had it. they had a my hat, I ain't got one on, I'll take one, I'll say. My hat's off to the trainers. <laughs> Show management and everybody yeah. else, because they put on a heck of a show up there. Oh, they Wasn't did. Nothing wrong with that. That's a bunch of good horses right there. I want to remind everybody about the shows this weekend. We've got them going on a little bit everywhere. We got them down in Humboldt. Got them in Huntsville, Alabama. The Smokies mm -hmm. in Lynchburg, Tennessee, where you will find me. 
and I hope a lot of people come down there. I just hope the rain stays away. Yes. The rain stays away. We're going to raise some funds for a good cause. Yeah. And uh, these kids, I want to see different activities for them. Yeah. I want to see another equine education. Some to, different kids and stuff like that yep. too to add to what we have going on now. Well, I'm wondering where we could go have one other than here. I mean, we we could have one in Murfreesboro. Uh, there's other locations. That that location right there would have been real good. Yeah. yeah. It's uh. I just want to see a another equine education where we can bring in kids and they can see how great it is. And of course, we need people to bring horses. Yes. But uh, it's not a bad bad deal for for it's not a bad deal for all of us. We no. all get together and work together. Remind everybody that our show starts at four o'clock, and be sure to come and eat because. We, we've got one of your buddies who's going to serve the food, yeah. and they're giving 20% of what they bring in to the Lynchburg 4-H, which uh, when we had to move the date, that knocked Lynchburg out of doing it, Yes, uh, the 4-H out of doing it, and they was real concerned. But when I told them what your buddy was going to do, yeah, uh, they changed their mind. <laughs> they, they said, you know, that's nice. And you say he... he Oh, he's right. good now. He's good. He don't live too far from him. When he well, tell everybody who he is. When he um I, Billy, mm -hmm. but um but when he fired that grill up, you can smell it all over the neighborhood. Yeah, he's ready. He's to ready. Go. He's, ready to, he's ready to go. Well, I know everybody's looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. We're gonna have. I'm hoping a great show. Uh, I just hope the rain leaves us alone. Yes. But we got Jake. Jacob's fixing our ring for us. And if it can be got ready, Jake Jacobs will yeah, get it ready. Get it he can get it done. Other than that, I'm still again. I'm I'm tickled to death with this Derby Classic and and what they accomplished up there. But the the major thing was no scratches. Yes. That's that's what is amazing, and it just shows the caliber. Of everybody that brought a horse knew that that horse was capable was of getting in. Getting in that show. he was ready to show. And that's that's what means a lot. So again, to the trainers, show management, everybody, and the VMOs, the DQPs, all of you, they they did a, a super, terrific job. That's it. And yep. next time I see you, just tell me I'll buy you a cold drink. Notice I didn't say a drink. Right. <laughs> I said a cold, a cold drink. drink. Yeah. A, that's a Coca Cola, Sun Drop, yep. something that, like that's that. That's right. See all y'all next week. See you week. later. Bye. <laughs> Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, oh, please start talking.